how does this fit in with the treatment of brain metastases? And so neratinib has a number of trials, actually, that are consistent with the CNS prevention effect. So in the Nefertiti trial, uh, which is a trial of first-line therapy of neratinib and paclitaxel uh, versus trastuzumab and paclitaxel, the progression-free survival was 12 and a half months in both arms. But the interesting thing is that CNS disease as a site of recurrence was only 8.3% in the neratinib arm, and I think a median follow-up of about two years or something like that, versus I think uh, over almost 20%, like 18 to 20% in the trastuzumab arm. So it clearly halved the, uh, the incidence of CNS metastasis, which I think is very strong. In the NALA trial, as we said, we had a reduction in absolute terms of a probably 7 or 8 percent compared to capecitib, compared to, to lapatinib. So that also is consistent. And finally, there was a very nice TBCRC trial, TBCRC 22, where, lapat, where neratinib and capecitabine were given in women with with obvious brain metastases, uh, and the um, incident, the uh, response rate was uh, almost 50 percent. It was like 49 percent, which is very, very high. And because of that, the NCCN considers that level two evidence and does have a recommendation for this combination uh, for the treatment of women with, symptom with obvious CNS uh, brain metastases. And they could be symptomatic or asymptomatic. So I think that there is a, a body of evidence that clearly suggests uh, very powerfully that this drug does influence the course of brain metastases in women with advanced HER2 positive breast cancer. What I generally use when a woman comes with advanced HER2 positive breast cancer uh, that has been through, say, you know, THP and then TDM1, um, do they have brain metastases or not? The extent of their visceral disease, uh, whether they have hormone positive disease or not, um, what prior therapies they've had, um, and really, it really it always is. I think the, the bottom line here is determining what, at the end of the day, is going to bother the patient the most right now. Is it brain metastases? Is it symptomatic disease? And you kind of tailor things one way or the other. Now, drugs like the, the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, like neratinib, do have activity with systemic disease, so they are a reasonable option. I think that the way to look at this is, again, we've had lapatinib and capecitabine forever, and this is now an advance over that in that we have an irreversible binder that works to suppress the receptor more. And it's, it just goes to the disease and stays there. It goes to the tumor and doesn't come out. And I think that those are the things that are important to know. And I think that, to me, is when people have brain mats, you know, and I'm thinking about what to do. Um, I think going forward, I mean, especially if this does get approved by the FDA, it is a registrational trial, um, will be one of my regimens that I use. The question is, would I combine neratinib with other agents? It's a good question. I think that, um, I don't know the answer to that. I think that uh, it's possible that I would combine it with Paclitaxel. There's evidence from Nefertiti uh, that it's a good regimen to use, but I mean, a lot of these women have already had Paclitaxel or Ataxane, Dosataxel, and a particle Paclitaxel, whatever, before. So I'm not sure. I think that um, uh, right now, I think I will stick to neratinib and capecitabine for now, uh, instead of using, say, trastuzumab and capecitabine. I think a lot of us would consider using the combo you know, neratinib, trastuzumab, capecitabine. There's no evidence for that right now. Um, but again, it really depends on the ratio of systemic versus CNS disease, or non-CNS versus CNS disease.